Hi, my name's AJ, and several months ago I made a promise to myself. A promise that I'd tell anybody willing to listen. So thanks for listening. In a second, you'll hear a testimony done in front of a live audience, but before that, I'd like to give you a brief background. In October 2010, I was diagnosed with osteogenic sarcoma, a cancer involving my right shoulder in the socket area. I went undiagnosed for a long time until the pain was, I mean, the pain was unbearable. My range of motion was little to none, and most of all, the thing hurt all the time. If you have been diagnosed with osteogenic sarcoma or any other cancer, please know this. Cancer is not a death sentence, nor is chemotherapy the only treatment option. There is a cure, so please, I encourage you, listen to this short audio testimony. I want to start off um, just pretty much from the beginning. It, it all kind of started about summer 2008 and uh, I was real active I played a lot of sports basketball um, I ended up injuring myself I uh, was hanging on the rim acting kind of silly and, and doing all kinds of stuff I shouldn't have and uh, I ended up tearing something in my shoulder I uh, tore my labrum and the capsule was stretched out so uh, at that point, you know, I was a Christian and everything, and, um, you know, I knew God heals, and I knew all that, but at that time, I was like, you know what, uh, you know, God can't heal this, you know, why would he, you know, why would he heal something like this? I mean, I did it to myself. So I had that kind of mentality, so I went and had the surgery, I, uh, the orthoscopic surgery, they went in there, repaired it, and I ended up going to therapy after that. And uh, it just never got better. I mean, like a year and a half later, I was still going to therapy, and the thing was just hurting worse and worse and worse. And, uh, you know, I think of uh, the psalmist, uh, uh, Psalm uh, 6 2. It says, Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. And, uh, I kind of knew what it was like to have bones and agony because, <laughs> you know, that's where I was at. I mean, if I could describe the pain, you know, I really, I really couldn't describe the pain because it was one of those things where you kind of have to go through it to kind of know what it was like. And, uh, I mean, some, some words here is, uh, you know, intense, never-ending, shooting, sore, teeth gritting, slow cutting, ache. <laughs> I couldn't sleep, like, I mean, I would, I would get up at night, and uh, it, it, it just kept me up all the time. I couldn't focus, I'd be in church, and it's like, you know, Pastor Sal would be up here, and I couldn't even pay attention, you know, if you guys ever lived in pain, you, you'd kind of know how debilitating it is. So we said, you know what, we need a second opinion, you know, this doctor, you know, he wanted to do another surgery on me at the time. And, so he said, let's go get a second opinion. So uh, I get referred to this doctor and, uh, you know, he had me take my shirt off. He's looking at my shoulders, kind of seeing what was up with them. And um, he, he said, you know what, uh, there's something wrong here. You know, let's get an x-ray. So we, I went in the back, got an x-ray. And my right shoulder, the bone, it was like there was more to it. It wasn't just the regular shoulder. It was like extra bone on there. And I said, man, this looks weird. Let me see the other one. So I went and got an x-ray of the other one. And he compared them. And uh, they were obviously different. He said, you know what, this looks like a tumor. I'm going I'm to have you I'm gonna have you go and get, get a few tests done. So I went and got a, a bone scan done. And, and that came back, you know, kind of negative. <laughs> and uh, got a CAT scan and um, MRI. And they all were saying the same thing. And it was some type of uh, malignant or benign tumor. So, you know, this was news to me. You know, I was always been real active, and and to kind of be brought that low. You know, once you, you know, are always doing something where you have so much pain where you can't. You know, it's kind of uh, kind of hard to take. And um, I ended up going down the hill. He referred me down the hill to. Uh, uh, some kind of specialist, it was a USC, 
And uh, he looked at all the tests that I did, and he said, you know what, um, you know how doctors are, they're real harsh, real short, and they'll just tell you what it is, and no compassion or nothing. He said, this is bone cancer, uh, and uh, it's a pretty bad tumor, and it's grown pretty big, and um, you know, he just, that's how it was with it. And it's called osteogenic sarcoma, and it's a bone cancer in the shoulder. And he said, uh, just to double check to be sure, we're going to do a biopsy and test it right there. And if it is cancer, we're going to put a, a port in your chest for the chemotherapy. And so and we said, OK, you know, I mean, what other choice we got? So we went ahead. I, I, I got the, the day, well, actually, the day of the, uh, the biopsy, you know, you're saying that we're going to have an oncologist right there, or whatever they're called, pathologist and um, we're going to pass the sample off and if it is cancer we'll go ahead and put the port in and i was kind of hoping at that point you know you know maybe it won't be cancer and, and i won't have a port in my chest and so when i woke up uh, of course the, the the thing was there and i was kind of bummed out and i didn't really know where else to go but but god of course and uh, Amen. and uh, from there um the, the cancer, the cancer that it, that it is, it was so aggressive that he wanted to do chemotherapy like real quick. So I had chemotherapy actually the same week. I went down there. I had the biopsy Monday, Thursday. I was already there uh, getting chemotherapy, and um, I mean, <laughs> chemotherapy is real bad. I mean, I can't describe it, but bad. You know, I mean, that's not real good, but you know. It was so bad that that I um, that I pretty much gave up. You know, I, I I chose death rather than another treatment. You know, it, it was just it was uh, it's unexplainable. And uh, you know, all the all you guys were praying for me. The church was praying for me. But it took me to come to this point. Um, it was a Sunday night, and. Um, I just gave up, and uh, it, when you're going through something like that, it feels like God's so far away, and you're just the only one going through it. And it wasn't a, a magical prayer or anything. I just kind of asked God. I said, "You know, God, can you hear me? You know, where you know where are you?" And uh, I ended up finally going to bed that night, and uh, you know, with the help of a bunch of anti-nausea pills and, and all kinds of stuff. And uh, I got a phone call the next day. My mom did, and the doctor said, "Hey, uh, you know, we want to, we want you to come down tomorrow. Can you make it uh, about ten or something?" He said, "What is it to to take the stitches out? Because at the time I saw the stitches in." I said, "No, no, no. We just we just want to see you." So he said, "Okay." And uh, we go down there, and um, you know, the doctor comes in the room. He says, "Abraham, you know, we had a real big meeting. A lot of the doctors, we all got together and." Uh, reviewed your case and it turns out that you don't have cancer but what it is is uh, some kind of benign tumor and what we can do is just take it out and I mean if you could have seen our mouths you know me and my mom and my brother I mean they were probably on the floor because after getting told all this bad news over and over by all these doctors it's you know it just I mean it had to have been God you know I mean and uh, you know, a, a scripture here that stood out to me through all this, uh, um, Psalm 66, uh, 16 through 20. It says, Come in here, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened, and he has heard my prayer. Praise be to God. Uh, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love for me. And, uh, you know, for some reason that stood out because when I asked if God can hear me, you know, his confirmation was that next day. He's, it was kind of like, you know, yes, I can hear you. And, uh, you know, he obviously demonstrated that to me. So if I can, if I can do any encouraging up here, I, I would just say that if you're going through something hard, you know, rough, you know, something like this, 
j- just know that even when God seems so far away, he, he, that's when He's actually the closest. Amen. Amen. And uh, it, I know it sounds kind of contradictory, but but that's what it is because <laughs> He heard my prayer. And, um, you know, that's pretty much it. I just kind of want to end with this few verses from this song. A lot of you guys heard it. I'm not going to sing it. So <laughs> it says, uh, Shackled by a heavy burden, neath the load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I'm no longer the same. So, Amen. praise God. Hey, thanks for listening to the Testimony. I just want to encourage you guys that, uh, you know, it wasn't any prayer that I prayed special. It wasn't anything that I said, you know, that was something that was just so magical that, uh, you know, I got healed from cancer. No, you know, it, was, it wasn't anything like that. I mean, I pretty much gave up. I mean, I literally gave up. I was just in so much pain. And, uh, I mean, chemotherapy is just so horrible with the nausea and and just everything that comes with it and I literally just gave up I mean I I said I didn't want any more chemotherapy I was done I was just gonna go ahead and die and let the cancer take it take its course because I knew that at least if I were to die I'd be in heaven with God but um, you know he had other plans for me and and I prayed that night I just prayed you know can you hear me God you know where are you and um, it, it wasn't anything like, you know, that I'd seen some vision or something. No, it was, I ended up just going to bed that night. I had to, you know, like I said in the testimony, I had to take a bunch of pills and nausea pills so I could eat, just stay still and actually lay down. And, um, you know, I went to bed. I felt alone. And, uh, you know, the next day... I got that phone call and, uh, you know, came down there and the day after that, I, I just, my life was forever changed because I had an encounter with God. And it may not have seemed like it at the time, but the encounter was there because I was changed. I was changed for the better. Cancer was gone. That whole situation, the whole circumstance was just wiped out. And, um,. You know, glory to God. And, you know, if, if if you're listening to this and you're not a believer in Jesus, if you're not a believer in God, I encourage you to to know Him, to know to know God, know who He is. Um, you know, do the research, uh, read the Bible, and most of all, ask Him into your heart. You know, ask Him that, you know, tell Him you want a relationship with Him. And, uh, you know, he, He'll forever change you. You know, a lot of people, maybe you're listening to this and you say, Oh, I don't believe in a God, this and that. You guys are just crazy. <laughs> well, you know, hey, you could go ahead and think that. But it's one of those things that you won't know what it's like until you do it. So I thank you for listening to this. I encourage you to do that. And um, remember this. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved. And that name is Jesus Christ, you guys. So, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Please uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video and the audio uh, testimony and everything. Take care and uh, God bless.